Hi there, this is a simple walkthrough on how to attach a Ubuntu server to a Windows domain. So as you can see here, there are some details about my uh, network setup. And um, so let's get to it. So right here I've got a terminal into my uh, VM. This is the toy VM, this is the Ubuntu machine that I'm going to be connecting to the Windows server. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get it set up at a static IP address as noted on the left here and I'm going to set the DNS server so that it points at the Windows server for its DNS services. So in order to do that I um, I had a um, have these lines prepared for the the um, slash net slash etc slash network slash interfaces file. So the, in Ubuntu and a couple other distributions, this is where a lot of the um, important networking information is um, set up. So as you see here, currently it's set to DHCP. I'm going to set it um, to static, so ipacmp 0 s 3 As, and just perform a couple sanity checks on these values. Make sure that the netmask matches whatever netmask your, your domain controller has. Make sure your address doesn't conflict with, any, with anything, all the basic stuff. Um, so the gateway should point to your router, uh, um, which in this case is 192.168.57.2. or and DNS name server, server should point to your domain controller. Okay, so as you should see here in um Um, on that line um, right um, next to the ENP 0s3, the INAT address ADDR 192.168.57.22. That means that we properly set the IP address, and um, now we can move on to the next step, which is configuring the um, NTP for the Ubuntu machine. Okay, so for the next step, we're going to be configuring the NTP. So I've got a um, page here. I'll include a link in the description. But um, this is uh, for setting up NTP. So as you see here, it's a simple apt get install to install the program, and then we're going to um, edit a file in order to um, get it get it to um, synchronize its time with the Windows server. And so you can run sudo apt install ntp. Say yes, and it should um, install pretty quickly. OK, so now um, as you see in the um, guide right here, you have to edit the slash etc ntp.conf. So I'm going to, you can open it with your uh, favorite text editor. So sudo vim ntp.conf. And if you look here, you can just look through the file and you see that. Um, and here it's setting these as default, so I'm going to comment those out and instead enter 192.168.57.3 and um, then restart the service. Okay. 
Okay, so now to move on to the next step, which is the actual installation and um, configuration of Kerberos. So Kerberos is the authentication part of this, so it'll hand handle the authentication and um, other parts will be taken over by um, other pieces of software. So um, this is again another guide on Ubuntu um, com and uh, I'm just going to install several packages they list here so wind windbind Samba um, these packages and also there's another one which you'll see here um, it's krb 5 user that'll be used for the authentication like I was mentioning before so I can just list all these packages so sudo apt install win windbind Samba with NSS dash winbind with lib pam dash winbind. Okay, with NSS dot winbind dash winbind with pam and KRB five dash. This shouldn't take too long. So, um, one thing oh, I'm going to update and uh, see what the back fixes it. But, um, one thing to note, which is going to be which has will make things convenient for working with this is I have this set up in a with a uh, host only adapter so as I was saying um, this is run with a host only adapter so I should be able to SSH um, that is going to be useful for is it's going to be nice because I'll be able to copy and paste configuration files and then tweak them as it is while it's a little more work to get a uh, copy and paste set up with virtual box. So after this finishes upgrading then I will get that set up. Okay, so that ended up taking a little bit longer than I thought it would, so I decided to kind of cut it, or, you know, um, <laughs> cut um, that part out. So I'm going to run this command again and see how it turns out. It should go smoother. So in this case, I'm going to enter my um, realm, which is <laughs> um, I picked that name after quite a bit of work. It wasn't my first choice, but it works. Okay, now now that we um, got that out of the way, let's um, go to the next step after installing all of the parts. Here's the configuration file, and this is when it really comes in handy to have an SSH session open, because
can open up the file, go to where it says you should go, and then you put that in there. Okay, so that's done. Um, I'm just going to print through this to see whether there's anything else I forgot to do. Doesn't seem like it so far. I'll get back to it if something does go wrong. But I'll just run those commands that are listed in the tutorial. Just restarting the services. Um, so that you can see slash combine stop. Okay, so now time to run the next set of commands. So um, these are using Kerberos. So this is based on the krv5-user package. So sudo kinet. So in that case, you would have needed to know the um, administrator's password. Um, let's see. So I know, for example, so um, the next command they give you is this, but um, down there they note that you should use this if you get um, certain errors. So I'm just going straight to that. And obviously, oh, okay. So right, you know how I mentioned that um, I wanted to. I didn't see anything obviously wrong with the configuration, but here it's saying it doesn't know the domain work group. So I'm going to edit smb.com and see where it says work group equals lab. I think that's what it's referring. To. So change this group to your domain name. So that's one thing that's not mentioned. So, oh, and I forgot to change the realm to my domain name. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I, I forgot those two parts. So, and actually, I should. Okay, so it says it joined to the DNS domain. So um, let's see whether that actually worked out. So I'm going to exit and see whether I can log in with a um, domain username. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I'm in, the, in an SSH session. I should go back to a terminal and um, see whether that works out. So the password is. Okay. So it turns out that I needed to make one more modification. So I needed to edit this file right here. So let's go in and do that.
and um, right here that it mentions that you should restart WinBind after um, editing the file, so I'm just going to do that right here. So, sudo. Now I'm going to try logging in. Let's see how this works. And there we go. So you can look at the guide for more information on what you'd want to do later on. If you noticed right here, it dropped you into the root directory. So you would get that done by edit by um, following the directions down here. So here in the pan, um, you make me different settings to um, make home directory and various other things. And you'd also need to make to change the configurations to give the certain give users uh, pseudoers rights. So you'd have to run the sudo. Oh, right now I'm logged in as Mari, but I I'd need to log in as one of the local administrators. Run the sudo in order to um, configure the machine to accept the group credential or to allow the domain admins, for example, to have permissions on this machine. But other than that, so, this is how you get done a very basic. Um, domain connection job, I guess you could call it. So uh, I'll see you later. Bye.